Hey guys, it's Hikari and I hope you're all doing well. If you've watched my art book inspiration video or my first sketchbook tour video, you would know that I am fascinated by sea slugs. Which, did you know that in Japan we call them umiushi or sea cows? Which is like, what a weird name, but <laughs> anyways. They are absolutely fascinating, the detail and the creativity of their design. It's just very amazing, and I think it's just crazy to think that these little guys exist in real life on the same earth that we do. So today, I wanted to share some of these fascinating little fellows and design my own human characters from them. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, our first sea slug is the Goniobranchus roboi. And a note to that, I probably won't be pronouncing any of these technical names properly, but please bear with me. And here I also wanted to share some fun facts with you all, but my quick Google searches did not yield much helpful information, and I didn't have that in my book either, so I can't share much with you guys except that they all look really cool and are very cute. When I was looking through my sea slug book, I was just surprised by the color and especially the brightness of the blue rib-like bottom parts. I think they're legs maybe, but I thought the blue was just very bright and the yellow color was very great too. I thought it was just so cool and they look like chunky sneakers, like the ones that Fila and Nike have, so I used that idea to start off my sketching. I went with an athleisure look. I wanted that like bright blue sole to be the hair at first. Then I tried the magenta tails as the hair and specifically as pigtails. And I think in the end it balanced out more with the overall outfit that I was planning. And that was really something for all the characters. Like balance was something I had to keep in mind since I wanted all the eye-catching parts of the sea slugs to make it into the final design which made colors and patterns of the clothes really important. For this first character, I decided to include the blue sole in the skirt and shoes. And for the pose, I decided to go with like a bubbly, excited character pose since the Goniobranchus Roboy gave me like a bright, bubbly vibe, if that makes sense. Like they have polka dots and their color palette is just very bright and the yellow is just like popping into your eyes. So it was kind of like a no-brainer that this character would be a happy one. I tried to incorporate that personality and finalize the design when I went into Procreate and did the final sketch digitally. I decided to also draw the actual sea slug next to them because it's good for comparison, but also it's just helpful for me when checking my design and the color palette and stuff like that. So for all three of these characters, I decided to draw the actual sea slug as well. And final design wise, the hair came from the Goniobranchus Roboy's tails. And the long sleeve shirt has like the yellow and blue polka dots. The skirt has the blue soles and the shoes are just, you know, the sea slug itself as the shoes. I also had the idea early on for the eyebrows to be like the circles because of the polka dots in the sea slug but also because it reminded me of like the old Japanese standard of beauty for their eyebrows and I think this character like pulls off the circle eyebrows really well so I just went with it. The coloring was a pain because instead of color picking I kind of eyeballed everything which in the end I don't regret because I was able to adjust the color to go better together but it was just a very time consuming and annoying process to get done. There were also a lot of adjustments I had to make, like I blurred the line art of the ribs to make them less intense and to make them blend in more, or like I also made the polka dots on the long sleeve shirt just on her shoulders instead of like all over the shirt to, you know, again, <laughs> make them less intense. And I also had to keep adjusting her skin color because at first it looked too gray and then it looked too green and then it was just it was difficult to make all the colors, not just the skin, but like all the colors and patterns work together. But I think in the end it ended up working out and the Goniobranchus Robo design is finished. I really like the final design and I'm glad that I was able to turn that little sea slug into this happy character. The second sea slug I chose had a more like scientist who is quiet but has gone mad vibes to them, which like just look at them like at least that's what i got from this photo of the philodesmium undulatum undulatum 
I think the orange swirly things in the outer translucent antenna thing made me think of like chemicals in a test tube and a lot of mad scientist designs go with like the crazy all over the place hair and that's like the idea I initially got from all the antennas everywhere. I got the hair design down pretty quickly and as I drew the character became less and less crazy and more mysterious and calm and like having a more quiet vibe to them and I think the color palette was maybe pulling me in this direction but yeah that was mostly what I did in the initial sketch I didn't do much and when I moved to the digital sketch I took more time to add details and this was when I started regretting drawing the actual sea slugs next to the character because this one was probably the hardest one. <laughs> I think it's mainly because they're very translucent, so trying to get that effect digitally was a challenge. And also, you know, the many many curly antenna things were just hard to draw and place down correctly, but because they're so unique, I decided that, you know, both the hair and lab coat could have that like curly antenna in their design. I also wanted to add like a bit more steampunk scientist element to them as more of an homage to the initial mad scientist idea. My first like design inspirations was like Takeuchi from Mars Red or Iris Watson from The Great Ace Attorney, which are very different characters from each other, but it was mainly the goggles and like the steampunky belt kind of stuff, so I decided that those two things were a must to include and I did simplify it because I feel like adding a very steampunk goggle and belt would have kind of distracted from the entire character but you know it's kind of in there. But overall I think this character is the one I want to work on a bit longer and make their design a little bit more intricate in a later date because I really like this idea and their silhouette quite a lot. But yeah, for this video, I just went on with the line art and coloring. The colors were quite pastel and easy, but what really was difficult was, again, the translucency, especially in the hair. I tried a lot of different things with having a low opacity layer over a 100% opacity layer of the hair, and then adding Gaussian blur, I think is how you pronounce it, Gaussian blur, to the orange swirlies in between the two layers and then adding shading around the edges to make it look softer. And I think these things helped and I did enjoy trying different things, trying to get the look that I wanted. So that was a fun challenge. I think the color palette of the character isn't super accurate to the initial photo, but I had to remind myself that this is designing a character inspired by the Philodesmium undulatum and not me trying to replicate the image of the sea slug itself. So I might work on their design a bit more and post about it sometime because I really do like the idea of a quiet mad scientist who looks very translucent and pink. But yeah, that's the final design for the second character. The third and final character might have been the one that surprised me the most. I chose the Elysia Crispata as the inspiration behind this third character. I did go into this third design wanting to draw a pretty boy, so <laughs> that's what I started with, with the sketch. I thought my go-to curly poofy hair with a long nose was just right for this design since this sea slug gave off like a royalty vibe with lots of ruffles like everywhere. And I was initially considering like a cravat, which is like what Edgeworth and Francisca have in the Ace Attorney series. but. I thought it would be kind of funny if like everything was ruffly and the prints just looked a bit much with all the colors and the ruffles. And I tried other things like I tried vests under the ruffly shirt and pirate corsets over it but I tried to finalize everything in the digital sketch and I also finalized his hair in the final sketch. I actually asked my family which hair options they liked because I just really couldn't choose. I personally really liked the longer mullet or the long ponytail, but I think it distracts from the ruffles around the neck, which is kind of the key design for this character. So I went with the shorter curly hair and the ruffles being everywhere on the shirt. His pose and expression gave me a lot of trouble as well. As inspiration, I did look at some ballet dancers who played princes. 
and I kind of took inspiration from their pose and expressions. I think if I was trying to design a more like quote unquote realistic person, I would have went with like a more stiff pose because I wanted him to have like a stiff personality with lots of colors and ruffles on his outfit that kind of like contrasted that personality. But I wanted to make the silhouette a little bit more interesting and after designing character number two, it <laughs> seemed kind of weird to go for realism. I also changed his expression a little bit to a more like cold and aloof one instead of smirking at the camera because the photo I saw of the Elysia Crispata did not give smirking at the camera vibes, it gave off like a I'm unbothered by your presence kind of vibe. So yeah, it did sadden me a bit to make these edits, but I think that's one of the things I've been realizing with this character design session. There's some choices I wouldn't make if I was just drawing for fun or like designing these characters. Again, like I would have kept the smirk. I would have went with the longer mullet hair or the ponytail, but I feel like that's kind of the point of these character design challenges. It's like to get out of your comfort zone and to try new things that you wouldn't do if you were just drawing for fun like normal. So, you know, I tried to make those choices and it, it was fun because of that. And I think that's why doing character design challenges is so fun and uh, meaningful and they're very popular on YouTube and other platforms as well, I think, because it's artists stepping out of their comfort zone and trying new things. So yeah, this character really surprised me because their design became something completely different from what I was initially imagining. And the colors were also a big part of that. I tried different combinations of colors on like different layers and kept flipping through them. And I was trying to go for like a more princely look, right? So I was going for like a more like fluffy white pastel look, but then I realized that that was kind of not accurate with like how blue this sea slug is. And I also wanted to add like a greenish color because you can't see it in the photo I showed in the beginning, but a lot of other photos of the Elysia crispata show that this sea slug has like a grayish green belly. So I wanted that to be part of the color palette, along with the yellow ridges and many, many kinds of blue. So I decided to just go all out with the color and ended up with what we see in the final character. I really enjoyed coloring the blue ruffles on both the character and the sea slug because honestly the shading was really relaxing. I just turned on my TV show and went autopilot mode and I would definitely recommend coloring ruffles as your relaxing activity of the day. <laughs> Anyways, this is the final Elysia Crispada design. And here is all three of them together. My last character design session with you all was the receipt character design which if you haven't checked out, I'll leave it in the card above. But yeah, these three are just a lot more much than the previous three. But I think that just goes to show how unique and extravagant a lot of these sea slugs are. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video and hearing about what I was thinking during this drawing process. Maybe you can also look up sea slugs and design characters. This was a lot of fun to do and also very challenging, so I would definitely recommend. Thank you again for joining me on this video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and see you next time. Bye!